My name is Nikki. I'm an English makeup artist and I live with Carlo and our daughter Skye in Positano, Italy. Our house is far from the road but surrounded by fruit trees and olive groves and we grow our own food. We'll show you what it's really like to live on the Amalfi Coast. Subscribe and welcome to the Positano Diaries. Hello. Everywhere. <laughs> uh, Tomasa is here, Carlo's son. He's going to cook lunch for us and um, he's going to cook a very, very special dish called... Tonno? Ventresca di tonno. Ventresca di tonno. I have no idea what that means. So he's going to talk us through it. Questa è una ventresca di tonno. Cioè, in poche parole, è la parte della pancia del tonno. Ventresca in italiano vuol dire ventre, pancia. Quindi Tommaso, sì. a good chef, cucinerà questo. Non so come, io non, non capisco niente, però sarà buono. Dopo, mo devi spiegare la procedura. May I add that Tommaso is actually a trained pastry chef, so he does know what he's doing. He works in the Agavi Hotel kitchen in Positano. Leave it to him. <laughs> allora, adesso facciamo una riduzione di salsa di soia con il miele, che useremo per condire la nostra ventresca di tonno, che... Faremo bollita, prima 30 minuti per togliere il grasso in eccesso e poi la piastriamo in padella con l'olio di sesamo. No, è molto interessante. And while he's doing that, I'm going to prepare some vegetables. I've got some um, melanzani from the garden which need to be used up. So I'm going to cook these up with some fresh tomato from the garden and some olives and capers. And then I'll probably do something else as well. I've got quite a lot of spinach to use actually, so I'll probably do some spinach. And maybe some potatoes in the oven. He has also added a little bit of marsala, which I've got for tiramisu's, and he's now adding some fresh orange juice as well. It's very yummy. At the first sign of cooking, Carlo always vanishes. Let's go and see where he is and what he's up to. Hello, not my cat. Don't you dare go in, it's not your house. Oh, surprise, surprise. You really like doing that, don't you? I have sliced up some potatoes and sprinkled them in thyme, oregano and rosemary with some salt and pepper. And I'm gonna roast those in the oven for a while. It smells absolutely amazing. Looks like chocolate. Okay, now this piece of tuna has to boil in the bag for half an hour. Okay? Per la bollire per mezz'ora? Per sgrassare, togliere il grasso in eccesso. Ah. To get the fat out. That's what it's doing. So here I've got some eggplant with some cherry tomatoes, olives and capers. I'm leaving that to cook. I'm gonna do some spinach with some garlic and lemon juice. So the tuna has boiled for half an hour. Il giallo è tutto grasso. And that yellow is all the fat that's come out of it. Oh my God. We used to have three wooden spoons in this kitchen. We're now down to one. I think one got turned into a tomato making spoon and it's on the end of a very long stick and the other one is in the tiny house because our guests needed it. So I really need to buy some wooden spoons. Here is our finished lunch. Looks very yummy. 
prenderò questo pezzo qua Eh, come ci portate? Ma chi è fece partizio? Chi dice? Chi decide che si doppia? Ah, là, così va. Che ho bocchetto, che ho bocchetto. A year ago today, one of my best friends got married. Elizabeth and Pepe got married on this day last year and had their wedding reception at La Tagliata restaurant up above Monte Petuso. We all dressed for the Austrian team and all dressed in traditional Austrian outfits. It was quite a big wedding and about half the guests were dressed in traditional Austrian clothes and we have decided that tonight we are going to celebrate their first anniversary by going back to the Tagliata and wearing our Austrian outfits again. Unfortunately, Carlo does not have an Austrian outfit, so he will be dressing normally, but me, Jackie, Elizabeth, the kids, I don't know if Mariana's gonna dress up, but we certainly are. So, time to get dressed. Sembra che non chiuderà mai, guarda. Però... <ride> non va, aspetta, come va? Si sta stracciando tutto. Fai come l'incredibile Hulk che si distrugge tutto. Those way? Lo devo stringere, va bene. No, non si. Devo mangiare. Oh, che stretto. Too many boobs. Now, what should I wear on my feet? Not my slippers. Ideally, these would be my shoes of choice. But let's face it, I've got to walk up 500 steps and then back down again afterwards. So, Converse or New Balance. Or I've actually just found a compromise. I've got a pair of beige flats. I think it's going to have to be then, isn't it? Yeah. And just to show you that I'm not the only one with the Austrian outfit on, these two look absolutely beautiful. <laughs> and these two as well, but you've got your coat done up. It's gold. Gold. <laughs> I'm going to take Holly out for a walk. It is not raining at the moment. It has been raining so much on and off in the last few days. And the weather report has been completely wrong every single day. So it's very, very hard to plan anything. Anyhow, not raining now. So I'm going to take Holly for a walk and chat with you about the end of season. The season has finished early here this summer and this is mainly due to lack of tourists. There's been a decline in visitors over the last two or three weeks and a lot of the hotels and shops and restaurants have made the decision to close early. We have actually had very rough sea for the last day or two, so pretty much all the boats have gone now because they've had to be taken away to be put in port for the rough seas. What do people do? 
in the winter here in Positano? Well, there's not much to do because most of the um, employment is based on tourism. So once the restaurants, hotels and shops all shut down, there's not much left to do. A lot of the men will get re-employed by the hotels and restaurants that they work in. They will be employed by villas as builders and painters. There's a lot of renovation that goes on in the winter. So all of the hotel rooms need to be painted. The villas need to be repainted. Everything's whitewashed, so that gets grubby quite easily. So every year it's all given a fresh coat of paint. That keeps some of the people busy. But for the rest of us, there's really nothing to do here. Obviously, most people would go on holiday at some point in the winter. That's probably not going to happen this winter. But usually, a lot of people would go to Thailand in January, and February and March because it is quite cheap to stay there for a long time and it's beautiful weather and great food. Quick update on the COVID situation. Positano is still very, very clear of COVID. Uh, I think there's been possibly one case in the last few weeks that I vaguely heard of, but it might be just a rumor because there's a lot of rumors go around in this town. And in the last day or two, there's been a couple of changes. The region of Campania, where Positano is, has closed all the schools again up until the 30th of October, um, as there has been a uprise in number of cases. It's not a huge amount. I think yesterday there was 1,100 confirmed cases in the region of Campania, which does have 6.6 .6 million residents. So that's really, not many cases per people in the region. But as a precaution, they have decided to close all of the schools to try and combat this in a way. Uh, we are not allowed to gather in groups of more than six people. We have to wear face masks everywhere we go outside the home. I'm not wearing one right now because I'm in the middle of the mountainside by myself. There's nobody around at all. And I'm not going to wear a mask. So mask please, please leave me alone today. There is also a change with the UK and Italy. They have struck Italy off the safe travel list now. So if you are traveling from Italy to the UK, you now have to quarantine for two weeks, which is going to cause a bit of a problem for Sky, uh, who's supposed to be coming back for half term next week. Uh, we don't know what we're going to do about that yet. I don't know if she knows about yet, that yet, and I don't really want to tell her, but we're going to have to figure something out. Every time I use this bottle and I put um, lemon and ginger tea in it, I make it too hot and I can't drink it while I'm out. And it keeps it hot, unfortunately, for a long, long time and it doesn't cool down. I'm really thirsty, but I can't drink that. Look, this is the fruit from a strawberry tree. 
and here is the tree. This is a Mediterranean species. Um, I can't remember the Latin name off the top of my head, but the fruits take all year to ripen and they start off green and they eventually go yellow, orange, and then deepen into a red. Fresh wild spearmint. This is my favorite type of mint. I'm gonna take this home and make tea with it.